oh wretched man oh man that i am oh wounded scarred worn down and weathered by the storms of life oh wretched man that i am paul is talking about his journey and his inner conflict in Romans 7. What I would do, I don't do. What I wouldn't do, I end up doing. I have a conflict within me. It's not me, but it's me versus the sin that lives in me. And when he comes to verse 24, it's not the whole story. It's not the whole picture, but it's part of the story. It's part of the picture, and it's part that we need to own in ourselves. Before you get to the glorious writings about the Spirit of God and, and the no condemnation passages in Romans 8, you've got to go through Romans 7, 24. You have to go through that to get there. And in it, he takes a big sigh and he says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? In Revelation 3.17, there's a slight echo of this sentiment when it says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now, no one aspires to wretchedness. All of us will resist the implication that we are wretched. No one wants to be known as a wretch. And yet, in his beautiful poem, hymn, Amazing Grace, Newton says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but, but now, now I see. To be a recipient of grace, the soul needs to know its own great need and acknowledge that it's depraved and lost in a sea of sin and that it is part of our human condition and to deny it in, and to avoid it and to fail to own that part of ourselves. What Paul said, the sin that resides in me is to resist the very grace of God. It is to say no, no to the great yes yes of god that is where we find no condemnation and acceptance and welcome the sound of grace the voice of god the word of the gospel that was made flesh and has been sounded forth from heaven into the realm of time and space it has declared with unambiguous faith Thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And we can say without any degrading of ourselves, amen. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, the hymn writer said. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. And without a breath or a rest in the song of grace, it's declared to us, the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, that we shall be Benjamin, Benjamin. That is our name, the beloved of the Lord, which is what it means. Saul was of the tribe of Benjamin, Benjamin, wretched in his righteousness, zealous in his misguided legalism, vengeful in his passion to please God, 
Why persecutest thou me, Jesus inquires of him in that vision on the road to Damascus. And grace came to brother Saul. Grace came to the wretched one, and the wretched one became an instrument of proclaiming grace to the nations. Even the least of the apostles, he called himself, and the chief of sinners. He would declare in 1 Corinthians 5, I mean, 15, 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And by his grace, which was bestowed upon me, it was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all did. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We need to know our state apart from grace that we might fully appreciate what God has wrought in us and done in us. It evokes in the heart of the honest soul both gratitude and hope flowing from the fount of humility. If you were to tear off a couple of your limbs and then deny that you needed them to be put back on, if you were to contract a deadly virus and deny that you needed your body's white cells to conquer that virus, if you took in a bacteria that began to work against your bodily systems and you simply denied the need for antibiotics. If you were to believe strongly that you could fly and you jumped off a tall building and then realized, oh, maybe I'm not endowed with that, wouldn't that be foolishness? If we were to declare we're not subject to human frailties and that we were able to operate fully in this life apart from the fullness of who we were called and meant and designed to be, uh, needing the spirit of God, the grace of God, simply to survive, but certainly to thrive. It would not be realistic. And so to be eligible for great grace, there is one qualification. We, need, we have to need it. And at some point, because we are people of dignity and we're made in God's image, we must acknowledge it and allow it and allow God to shower it upon us. He's waiting to shower his love upon us. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The next verse says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I thank God that this wretchedness is not the end of the story. It's not even the beginning of the story. It's simply part of the story. I once was lost but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.